everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Mode. And today on Hot Mode, we are going to be getting into the fashion from the coronation of King Charles III and discussing all of the looks that appeared. Listen, we're going to be doing mostly like royal family vibes just because timing. Nothing crazy, nothing kooky, nothing overwhelming, just good old fashioned toffiness all around. I also should note that before anybody's like, oh, well, you're American, you don't know what you're talking well, I'm also English, so I have the passport. I've been, I've seen it a few times. Don't worry, I have some inkling of what's going on, but you know, if you must comment, hate comments, do multiple. It's good for the algorithm, okay? First up, let's get into like the meat and potatoes here, King Charles. The thing that really was like the intriguing element is him in his crown with his little purple cape on and his ermine trim furs and the gold embroidery and a little purple silk shirt underneath and the black pants and the gold and the black shoe with the gold buckle, you know, and the crown that was also kind of important, right? Now the first crown that we see is the King Edward's crown made in like 16, I think 61, something along those lines. It is filled with quite a lot of jewelry, diamonds and aquamarines and tourmalines and emeralds and sapphires and all that jazz. It's a beautiful little crown. It has some purple velvet that creates the hat element and then it's trimmed in black and white ermine. And listen, it has a colonial history. You know what I mean? I don't know that England produces a lot of those gemstones naturally, so you can imagine where they came from. So listen, while it's a beautiful crown, it has a very bloody past, so do with that what you want. The other crown that he wore was the imperial crown. Now this imperial crown is, I think, a little bit less decadent, although I know that sounds comical when I say that, but apparently it is, because that gigantic ruby sitting in there. It has the purple sort of velvet hat element, it's the interior, it's what sits in between the sort of wavy pieces of metal, and then it's trimmed in the ermine at the bottom, which is what sits on King Charles's head. Like, Charles in the fashion is not really that important. I know that he was the one made king, but like, we were not really looking at him. A little bit like the queen for 70 years. But I'm bum We'll talk about the actual look, though. Essentially what we can see is this beautiful cape. It really is gorgeous. It is trimmed in this white fur and there are these little sort of black almost triangular dots that run throughout. Now I've said multiple times already that that is ermine. Ermine is a type of mammal that historically royalty would essentially have skinned and then trimmed and then they would take the black of the ermine because the ermine usually is white and then the tip of its tail is black and they would take multiple of these little tails and they would place them all along the different parts of the actual fur. It's historically a very sort of royally coated material, textile, fabric, skin. So if you're wondering why there's so much of it, that is the reason why it's sort of always been royal associated and it's been associated with royalty from all over Europe historically. There is, maybe it's a black velvet that then sort of juts out and that's what really the actual cape is sort of based in. And then there is a gold sort of embroidery that runs down in this sort of trim strip style. It is probably very beautiful, very decadent, very old school embroidery as well. From what I've read, Charles was very into sustainability with his coronation, which I know, again, laughable, but he wanted to make sure that there weren't too many things that were created new. So I'm sure that this is probably an older style or it's used from remnants and things of that nature. The purple shirt with the black pants. The black pants don't really fit good. Why do they fit like that? I do not understand. Don't get it, but I'm sure that it's ceremonial garb. I like the shoes though. The gold buckle's fun. Overall, listen, like Charles isn't really nowadays a fashion magnate. From my understanding, he was. People said that he was. It, it happened. It is what it is. I, we weren't really looking at him anyway, were we? Next up, we have Queen Camilla. You know me. I'm not really like biased, but like there's almost like a whole dedicated section to my queen, the true queen, the girl. Am I a Camilla fan? I am not. Will I look at the look with an attempted unbiased eye for you all? Sure. Camilla is wearing a crown that actually I believe was already made normally from my understanding. The queen is always sort of made a new crown when it comes to a coronation. But this is the crown that was worn not by Queen Elizabeth, but by Queen Elizabeth's mother, the queen mother, when 
her husband was coronated. There was a sort of homage here in Camilla's look to Queen Elizabeth II herself, and she's actually wearing this large diamond necklace that Queen Elizabeth wore to her own coronation. So she's, again, you know, paying homage to Queen Elizabeth, who passed last year. I get it. I understand it. I don't think it looks bad. And then the dress is actually a custom look by Bruce Oldfield. Now, Bruce Oldfield made quite a lot of looks for Princess Diana. That was a reckoning and a half for some of us. But Bruce Oldfield, I will say, isn't really like a fashion designer, fashion designer in the sense that we talk about fashion where he shows a few looks every season on the runway. No, no, no. He does a lot of custom styles. It's what historically he has done for most of his career. He wasn't really a designer that was, you know, showing on the runway and all of those sorts of things. He was usually working with private clients and a lot of his work then stemmed after I believe 1981 from Princess Diana because that's when he and her first started to work together. And what I will say is I do like the dress, to be completely honest, for the most part. I do really, really like the fact that you have this sort of almost faux bolero style jacket that sort of sits on the shoulders. It comes and sort of contours around the bosom and then runs itself around the back. It's intriguing. It's sweet. The thing also that's very intriguing about this look specifically is the fact that throughout the entirety of the dress, it's full of silver and gold embroidery. And the embroidery is meant to look at a lot of the wildflowers of the English and British countryside. So that's where Charles and Camille spent a lot of their time. They, they love the plants and the nature and the sustainability and yada yada yada. So that's kind of why you're getting this. And I will say I do think that the embroidery is really beautiful. It is, it's stunning. I think it works really, really well. There are other little elements of great British Nists and I'm going to say house codes in this concept. Each of the flowers of the four nations that make up Great Britain, that's kind of the majority of it. There is a sort of Camilla Regina situation going on right at the bottom part, which I think is a little tacky personally. Like, I get it, I understand it, but also I think it's tacky. I do. I just, I don't think we need like logomania on the bottom of the dress. We get it. You're Camilla. We know. We see. We understand. And then there are her two dogs. Also, again, shoot me, but I think that that's a little tacky too. I think it would have been fine just with the beautiful wildflowers. I think that's all you needed. This feels a little ostentatious to me. Just my thoughts. Just my opinion. I don't care what anybody thinks. That's what I think. I don't like it. I think it ruins the dress, to be honest. I do think from the side, the dress is really beautiful because we can see that, again, there's this sort of continuing concept of pieces overlaying and then flowing out sideways. I do think it's really, really sweet. I think it works. I think it's really nice. The only thing that I really think needs to go is, again, like the weird personal embroidery. Like, I don't need the personal element. Keep it to yourself. I don't really care. I just want the pretty wildflowers. Thank you. So all in all, listen, I'm shocked, but like, I kind of like Camilla's dress and you know, it pains me to say that. I'm not happy about it, okay? But next up we have Prince William of Wales and Princess Catherine of Wales. I'm using proper titles here. Now let's talk about William first. Listen, he's in ceremonial military garb. That's what he did. He was in the military. I don't know which part. He's wearing this blue velvet robe. It's actually, it's a nice blue velvet. You know what I mean? Blue velvet's nice in general, but it looks nice. There's a lot of tassels and bows and things going on there. And listen, will I regale you all with each meaning of each ceremonial garb element? No, I'm sorry. I just, I have a life. Long story short, do I think it fits fine? I guess. I mean, I think the pants again, like I don't really get the Windsor pant fit. It Like it never fits well. I don't really understand it. I don't really get it. It just looks kind of weird, whatever. As for Kate, listen, this is her in like full cape. She's going to do a reveal later. I think the cape's okay. You know, blue silk with red sort of trim. There's this big gold embroidered star. She has some necklaces on and she got her big headpiece on. I think it's fine. Very, again, ceremonial. I get it. I wish the ceremonial robes were a little bit more interesting looking, but it's red, white, and blue, Union Jack, sure. But as Kate sort of moved, we could see that the cape actually kind of opened up a little bit and there was a white dress underneath. Now, this white dress was designed by Alexander McQueen, Sarah Burton specifically, who made Kate's wedding dress in 2011. They've had a very, very long relationship. It's something that they both sort of worked together 
over the past, what, 12 years now. It's a simple sort of clean white dress. And what I will say is the embroidery of silver at the bottom in the hem area of a thistle is striking. It looks really beautiful. I think it looks really, really well done. It has like a ghostly haunting quality to it, which I think very Alexander McQueen. I think Sarah Burton did a great job of keeping that sort of element. The white shoes, easy, breezy, don't mind, don't hate. And the thing that I read is that allegedly the whole big to do was Kate wasn't going to wear a crown. But what she did instead was she wore a flower headpiece. It was a collaboration between Alexander McQueen and Jess Collette, who I believe is a jewelry designer. And essentially we can see that it is made up of foliage and little flowers in silver, which matches the embroidery going down on the dress. I think it's smart. I think it's cool. I do think it's a lot less ostentatious than normal royal ideas of a crown and all of that. I'm pretty positive that Charles trying to like trim down the monarchy and make it more modern and make it more sort of normalized. I think that this fits into that narrative. Do I think again, a coronation is going to feel modern and trimmed down? No, but to each. The other thing that was intriguing was the fact that Kate wore Princess Diana's earrings. They're beautiful little silver earrings with a pearl drop. Really cute, really simple, really nice sort of paying homage to my girl who should have been there. But regardless, I think Kate looked nice. Next up, we have Prince Harry, who is wearing a custom Dior tuxedo suit. I like the tails on him. I think it looks good. The black three-piece is wonderful. I like the fact that the waistcoat actually is double-breasted. I think that's a sweet, little, subtle, nice difference than what we normally see when it comes to waistcoats. I think the little silver tie works, plays in with what everybody else is going for, even though the media is like, they hate each other. I'm like, well, somebody got the memo. I presume that these are sort of like military buttons and ribbons and medals and things like that. I don't think they take away from the look. I think they look fine. I think the fit of the pant from what we can see looks decent. I think this is good. We then had Princess Anne who went full ceremonial regalia. And Princess Anne is the only person that I think understands that the Windsor pant curse is not applicable to her because like look at those pants she looks great i like those pants a lot i think they look wonderful on her i like this i think that it's a cool version of the ceremonial garb the green velvet looks really nice the gold and the ribbons and the medals and all of that it looks nice looks wonderful the hat i get it i think princess anne's the only person that's really making the ceremonial garb work for her everybody else works for the garb she is the employer of the garb you know what i mean it's it's hers she runs it. I think she looks good. We then had Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the kids because, like, they're kids. Listen, I think Prince Charlotte looks darling. I love that little capelet. Kate dress with the silver embroidery matches mom. Very nice. Sweet. Prince Louis in navy blue. Lovely. Easy peasy. Military-ish sort of style. Again, paying homage to dad. And then Prince George wore a little red page boy look. It's very ceremonial, historical page boy outfit in red. They make a red, white, and blue. Union Jack of homage as well, standing together, very smart. Kate Wills, they got it together. Then we had Princess Eugenie, and she is wearing a simple, easy, navy blue coat that I actually kind of like. I love the seam that runs down the sleeve and the shoulder. That's just like a me detail. I don't, people normally would like that, but I think it is kind of nice. She's then wearing a really simple sort of navy blue silk dress that hits around the shin. She is pregnant, so I think she's just trying to like get through it understandable. The shoes don't love, but again, a sensible shoe is important if you're trying to feel comfy and all of that sort of jazz, but they work, they fit. And then her little hat, very casual, nothing crazy where I don't think we'll ever get the, the stepsister big head pieces. So, you know, I missed that. I thought it was fun, but she looks fine. As for Beatrice, she looks good. I like this dress. It is by Balula London. It's a fuchsia little dress. I like the little puff sleeve and the puff shoulder. The little belt. Normally I don't like a belt over a dress, but here I think it works. I think it fits really, really well. I think it helps let the dress flow. I like the headband, headpiece tiara thing. I don't really understand it. It's like a gold thick piece of headband but I think it works. It looks crown-like, but it's made out of fabric, so it sort of stays away from being ostentatious over the top. Big headpiece a la the royal wedding. I'm into the vibe. I think it works very well here. Beatrice has cleaned up her act. I'm very into it. We then had Zara Phillip serving it to the girls. I'm a Zara stan. I like Zara. She is wearing this little coat dress in this beautiful little blue. I like it. It's powdery. It's nice. The belt, it's very like 2010, 2011. Most of them feel like they all dress like it's still 2010, 2011, which I understand because continuity and consistency and all of that sort of stuff. But at the same time, it's like, 
we could have something exciting every once in a while. The taxpayers are paying for it anyway, you know what I mean? Be a little adventurous, doesn't hurt. But I think the coat dress really looks nice. I like the collar of it. It looks faux lapelli, the way that the seams sort of run in. Create a nice sort of cut. Very intriguing, very lovely. I think the headpiece also works really, really well. It doesn't cloud the head too much. It's almost like a piece of fabric. It's like an eye mask with feathers and ribbons running through it. And she looks good. We then had Rishi Sunak and Akshata Murdi. Now, Rishi is the prime minister and Akshata is the wife of the prime minister. I don't know the name. I don't know the acronym if they have one in the UK. Tailcoats, black, gray pants, white shirt, blue tie. I don't know. We could have went for like full black, personally. Personal opinion. I know that it's very sort of Eton and Oxford to wear the black jacket with the gray pants. I get it. I understand it. I just think the black pants would have looked nicer. That's just my humblest of opinions. As for Akshata, don't love the dress. It's a jacquard. It's blue. It's floral. I don't understand why there's like a strip of fabric that wraps around the waist and you're gonna say Luke you were just happy with the belts like at least those were belts you know what I mean this is like strip of fabric covering the seam I don't like it as for the length of the dress I think it's fine but I just think it's kind of blah I think it's a little bit robotic a little bit uninteresting a little bit unmemorable then we have Jill Biden full Ralph Lauren look custom I appreciate Jill trying that jacket is an attempt a for effort, not great execution. Jacket situation going on, I do think is cool. I like the concept of it. I just think the fit of it is weird. I think the sleeves are rough. I think even the way that it sort of wraps across, you can really see creasing in there, just kind of like uncomfortable. The skirt, I think is fine. It's not great. It's fine. It's a little hobble skirt looking, which is kind of weird too. I understand that Jill like then tried to match with her granddaughter to like do the Ukrainian flag thing. It's like, that's great. Something else. Could have helped. I appreciate the attempt. It's just fell very flat. Then we had Penny Mordaunt. She is a British politician. I like this look. I think the dress is fine, but I think the cape is really lovely. I think the gold embroidery running along the sort of collarbone area is really, really nice. And the fact that it matches in with the headpiece, I think really, really works. The thing that's really awful, the shoes. The ballet flats with the crystal bows. I don't know. I don't get it. Like, I think a really cute, sensible matching color heel would have been so lovely. Maybe even like a shoe in a similar color that was a flat with similar embroidery could have worked, but I, I just don't understand like bow black silk shoe with this. Because it's a gorgeous color, it looks really nice. It's just, I don't understand the shoe, don't get it. It's ugly. We then had Pippa Middleton and she wore Claire Michavani. It's a very light yellow shin length dress, coat, they love a goddamn dress coat and I really don't understand it. I think it fits fine. I just don't think it really like does much. I think the flowing of the skirt element of the coat, it's nice. It fits well, you know, up top the bust area looks fine. It looks good, it works. I think the hat's cute. I think the hat's fun, little straw hat with a little sort of tulle fluff flowing out of it. But I don't know, maybe like something a little bit cuter in the dress detailing with the tool maybe jutting out just the bottom fun and cute to sort of correlate with the hat it feels a little bit less joyous than maybe it's meant to be for me kind of blah we then a dame emma thompson she is wearing a amelia wickstead floral rose coat in red i think it's cute with a black dress underneath chunky black heel i think it's a vivier because it has a little buckle on it the jacket's nice you don't see a whole lot of emma thompson out and about doing fashion girl stuff. So I want a little more, of course, but I get it's not really about that. At the same time, it's fine. It's fine, but I want more. See, then we had Joanna Lumley, who I love, you know what I mean? Patsy looks stunned. I think that this A-line coat in navy blue with the little collar in white is just so cute and fun and sailor vibes. I think the matching hat and the gloves works perfectly. The little tights with the shoes, very English woman shoes. My mom has these shoes, I'm sure. Again, like I don't love the shoes, but she was presenting, so I understand like if it's gonna be from what, the waist up, you don't have to do amazing crazy shoe and also you want to be a little comfortable but even then I think that the navy blue shoe with the white sole works here because it's matching what's going on up top. I just love the dress coat here. I think it's a great example of like the A-line works. Like the 60s never put the English wrong. I don't know why we don't tally ho on that because it's hot. She looks great. I'm a fan. Patsy knows what she's doing. I'll live in forever. Then there's Lady Louise Windsor, and she is wearing a Susanna London. I like this floral dress. I think that the smocking going on right at the waist area is a great way of not having to use seams as a manner to fit 
the waist. I will say that in general with the hat and the print and the length of it and all that, those very 80s could have been worn to Diana and Charles' wedding. It has that 80s vibe. Maybe it's just that when the Windsors put things on, it looks kind of 80s, but like for the most part, it's very old school. The young royals need to like blaze a path forward and be a little bit more intriguing and bring us into like the 2020s fashion because the old guard's still stuck in 2010, 2011. They're still reliving the glory days, so we need the young gang to make us feel something else, please. And finally, we have Katy Perry who performed. She's wearing a custom Vivian Westwood skirt suit. Listen, the plunging sort of neckline with the sheer little shirt underneath. I kind of like that. And then the skirt, I think fine. I do think the jacket fits nicely. It feels very Vivian, very English tailoring. I think the matching gloves is lovely. The fascinator I'm fascinated by. I think Katy Perry, considering she's an American who doesn't know much probably about British culture, I think she did a good job here. Vivian Westwood did her well because I think the color works. It's lovely. It's fun. It's bright. It's pastel. It's springy. It's very English. And at the same time, I think the whole look fits her good. I think the fabric, the way that it shines is lovely. It works. I'm into it. It's fine. I just wanted to breeze through it, discuss it, talk about it. Best. I don't really think there was best. Nobody really like made me feel anything super well. Oh, Princess Anne. Give it to Princess Anne. And Princess Charlotte. Cute. And Joanna Lumley for the, the peasantry. As for worst, Jill Biden. Appreciate it. it. Didn't work. Put Camille in there for old time's sake. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next video. And TTYL.